It's a bittersweet moment when your child starts growing up. You're so proud of their various accomplishments, and all of a sudden you realize that you failed them. I failed my oldest daughter, Kelly. I told her almost every day to be cautious when she's using the internet and what to look out for while she's online. I regret to tell you that she did not listen to me. Last year, I got a call from Kelly who informed me that the FBI had her laptop. Can you imagine that? I'm a cybersecurity expert and my own daughter did not practice cyber safety. Kelly was in her apartment reading a free online novel, something that she enjoyed, when suddenly her laptop screen froze. It appeared to Kelly that the FBI breached her laptop. She stopped like a deer in the headlights while trying to gather herself. She was frightened out of her wits, and I could hear a river of tears flowing down her face. The on-screen image showed the FBI seal, a picture of Kelly as she sat reading the online novel, and a demand that she immediately pay $300 to regain access. <laughs> How scary is that? The message looked official. Think about it. You get a message like that from the FBI. And what occurred with that point was Kelly paid the ransom with a prepaid card as she was, as she was required to do. Then all of a sudden, she gave me a call, and we talked about it, about what she should do and how she should prepare herself when she's online. And at that particular point, I gave Kelly three pieces of advice. One, always be cautious when you're on the internet. You have to look for fake emails, look at the grammar, look at the language. There's always someone trying to trick you. You can do several things. You can take the mouse and scroll it over the URL. Is it a legitimate site or not a legitimate site? That's what being cautious is really all about every single time. Whether you're on your phone, your tablet, your computer, your, I, your Apple iWatch, anytime you touch the internet, you must be cautious every single time. Third, I told her, well, second, I told her to look out at your browser. The HTTPS with a little lock tells you that it is secure. And what does security mean is that it's encrypted, which means if someone hacks it, they can't read the content. Whereas HTTP, no S, it is un, it's not encrypted, it's plain text, and any hacker can read it at any particular time. And so therefore, it's really important for you to be cyber safe. For example, in 2021, over 50 million healthcare records were breached. And I guess you may ask, what do hackers want? Hackers want every single thing. They want your confidential information, your metadata, your date of birth, your internet traffic, your gaming information. They want everything. Identity theft is a major cyber crime. For example, if I get your credit card, your email address with a weak password, and guess what? I buy a boat, thank you very much. The famous bank robber, um, Willie Sutton, he was asked, why do you rob banks? And he said, that's where the money is. Hackers hack because the internet is where the money is. Data is stolen, information data is stolen and sold on the internet dark web all the time. And so that's where your information is going to end up. So I would say this, any of us can be hacked at any given time, at any given time. So therefore, you must be cautious. I have a friend, Richard, who spends a lot of his time at his local library researching his favorite his wine-making habit. So on one particular day, he left his belongings on a study table, uh, didn't think anything of it. And when he came back, a stranger was looking at his cell phone. And, you know, he didn't think anything of that either. But later on, he left the library, tried to make a purchase, and it was declined. He checked his bank account and realized that it was accessed. I mean, he had a strange, painful look on his face. And he said, I made a huge mistake. In most situations, human error is the weakest link in the cybersecurity chain. More than that, Richard's cell phone was accessed, and his savings of $200,000 were gone. 
Ironically, though, his bank account password was his favorite wine, Merlot, an easy guess based on his hobby. And what occurs with your password is this. At least 60% of people use their name or date of birth as their password. And that's something that you definitely should not do. For example, your password should never be reused and it should never be shared. That's like opening your digital door to a problem. And more importantly, today, software is designed to guess your password. So you're pretty much playing against a computer. And this is what's very important. And so Richard, I advise him to do several things every single time. One, use your auto lock feature that's on every cell phone. And don't leave your cell phone unattended basically any time. More important to that, use a username, a unique username every single time you have an account, regardless of what that account is, your banking, your auto, your home loan, a different username with every account. Then use an encrypted passphrase, a strong encrypted passphrase with your devices all the time. And more importantly, use two-factor authentication. Now, two-factor authentication is a two-step process that pretty much gives you more security uh, with any of your devices, which, which means that you can't get access without a second device. And so once again, that limits the idea of having hackers take your stuff. And that's very important because cybersecurity is really the process of protecting your sensitive data. And that's something you have to do as a gatekeeper of your information, whether it's your personal information, the school information, the hospital's information, your insurance information, your data exists in a database somewhere. And you have to ask yourself, how secure is my information? Because once again, hackers are looking for it all the time. And so therefore, it's very important. I would say this, that Kelly and Richard are like many of you. You don't need to be a cybersecurity expert to be cyber safe, but you, knew, but you do need to be cyber aware. And being cyber aware is that you're going to take the time to be cautious. You're going to take the time not to be so click, quick to click, and that's very important. So I'll leave you with these several things that you need to think about almost every single time you touch technology anywhere it may exist. You must make sure that your software and applications are updated regularly. You must make sure you have a strong passphrase. And a passphrase is simply less predictable if it's usually four or five random words, uh, 18, 16 characters or something like that. It's very important that you have a unique passphrase to use. And then you want to make sure you use two-factor authentication. Once again, you don't want to make it so easy for anyone to gain access to your devices. Then I would encourage you to scrutinize all email and text messages. That's really critical. And also finally with that, make sure you're using a antivirus software. And there are plenty of them out there that you should be using as well. So more important than anything else, as I said, it's important for you to be the gatekeeper of your technology when it comes to your personal information, your data, your family's data, because as I said, cybersecurity and cybercrime is a global phenomenon. You're, you're battling against bad guys who simply job is to get what you have. And so you have to be risk aware and cyber aware every single day now and pretty much forevermore. So once again, I would tell you that cybersecurity is like locking the door to your house or your car. It may not stop the bad guy, but if you make, the, uh, make it more difficult and more secure, he may go on to a easier target. So therefore, you must be, you must be secure. You must stop, think before you click. Lock your digital door. <laughs>